Тинг. Лайк числа. Hey, I've got a meter here, and it's reading 117.4 volts of RMS AC at my fingertips. And you know who we have to thank for that? This guy. So when you think of Tesla, maybe you think of a car, but maybe you think of this guy, the famous Time magazine cover. Maybe you think of him reading a book in front of his big coil. Maybe even you think of this guy. This channel is here to celebrate Tesla's genius and his intuition and to see how we can apply those lessons to our life. How can you get better intuition to understand the world around you and in particular technology? So what we're going to do here is we're going to walk through some of Tesla's patents at times. We're going to build things. We're going to run experiments. We're going to do some teardowns. We're going to do evidence-based research to provide good information about Tesla. Because let's face it, if you've searched for YouTube videos about Tesla, you've probably seen some things of, uh, let's call it uh, questionable veracity. All right, so we're gonna talk about energy harvesting. We're gonna talk about radio propagation, creativity in general, how to build things, how to think about things. And uh, some of these devices that we build, I'm gonna have to end up giving away to my watchers here, to my audience, because you know I only have so much room here. So we're also gonna talk about electrical safety, which is always important when we're doing things with high voltage. And maybe we'll even debunk some pseudoscience. Who knows? So stick with me here. We're going to learn about this together. But what I wanted to talk about today was Tesla's big secret. If you could summarize what Tesla thought about and what he invented down to one thing, what would that be? Let's sketch something out here. We're going to do a thought experiment, which is something Tesla always did. It said that he was able to visualize in his mind everything about an invention. He could see exactly how it would work and he would put it together and when he finally built it on the workbench it would work exactly the way he saw it in his mind. So we're going to do a little thought experiment here. This is a pipe. It's filled with water and these are stretchy water balloon type membranes. Okay, so see I, I ended up drawing one slightly bigger than the other. So this situation were to arise, what would happen? Well, this side would be stretched more because it's bigger. So it would push the water through the pipe to this side until they were at equal pressure, right? It would very quickly, if these, if these were unequal, it would very quickly just level out and find equilibrium. So not too interesting, but now let's add one more thing in here. In the middle of this pipe, we're gonna put a paddle wheel and that's attached out to, to some, some big weight. So it's got some inertia. Now, if it's in a steady state, there's no, no water is going to flow. But if either we start this thing moving by putting a current through the pipe or by making one of the water balloons more full than the other, play through in your mind what's gonna happen. All right, so the water is gonna go through the pipe like before, but it's gonna run into this paddle wheel, which, initially is not moving. It's going to have to push against that paddle wheel and to get it turning and develop some inertia. So we'll get to the point where the two water balloons are in equilibrium, but then there's still inertia in the system here. So it's going to keep pushing the water over to this side until this one is more full. Then that's going to reverse and the water is going to slosh back and forth at some particular frequency that is the resonant frequency of this system. So as you can guess, there are electrical analogies to both of these systems. We're going to talk about this more as in upcoming videos. But the stretchy membrane is kind of like a capacitor. A capacitor is something that stores energy in an electric field. And this thing with the inertia is kind of like a coil of wire. This stores energy in a magnetic field, which is represented by the uh, inertia of whatever this thing here weighs. So resonance. This was Tesla's main idea. All right, let's take this to the lab. Now some of the component values used in the circuit here are pretty inconvenient to put up on the bench. We got a one Henry inductor here. That would be a quite a large chunk of iron and a 1000 microfarad or one millifarad capacitor here. So we're going to send one hertz into this thing and there's a resistor here just so that when we're measuring voltage we're not just measuring what is coming right across the uh, signal generator here. We're actually measuring what the circuit can do. So let's start that up. Let's fire up our scope. Let's make sure our input signal looks like what we think it will. 
Okay, there's one hertz. You notice here the peak to peak value is exactly 10 volts. That's good, five volts above, five volts below. And now let's look at this part of the circuit here. So let's look at the inductor voltage. All right, so here we see that even though the input signal is one hertz, we see it ringing out after that. It's ringing out at about five hertz there, which is the resonant frequency for these large components. Most of the time in circuits, in radio circuits, the resonant frequency would be thousands or millions of times per second. This is much slower so we can see what's going on. All right, so we see 5.02 hertz. Peak to peak voltage here is 2.65 volts. Now, as we, we can go back to the signal generator here, and we can change the frequency that we're putting into this. So if we put in the five hertz, that's very close to the resonant frequency, notice the voltage here going up. It's actually going above the voltage that we're putting into it. So this is what we talked about. The resonant circuit is storing energy. It's sloshing back and forth between these two components. And if we change the frequency just a tiny bit, do it on a four hertz here, watch the peak to peak voltage. Drop down a little bit, I hit enter. So yeah, peak, peak to peak voltage dropped way down to around one volt, under a volt now. Just making that small change to the input frequency. So when you have a resonant circuit, if you're giving it little pushes at just the right time, it can build up large amounts of energy. The other thing that resonance is good at is filtering. So that one particular resonant frequency is going to accept and other frequencies that might be present in the system will reject. So that's the way old time radios used to work. Some of the new ones do clever stuff with computers, but back in the 1800s, it was all about resonant circuits. So there you have it, Tesla's big secret. And now that your mind has been primed to the idea of resonance, you're going to see this in, in practice all around the world. Wherever you look, keep your eyes open and look for signs of resonance. A few closing notes here. So what is this channel not about? I think that's just about as important as what it is about. So this is not about new agey, woo woo stuff. It's no time travel here, no conspiracy theories, no pyramids, aliens, not even bashing Edison as much as he deserves it. So if you want all of these things and more, I'm gonna encourage you to check out the Tesla Chronicles, which is a fiction series that I'm also working on. All right, so I'm gonna conclude this with a couple of shout outs. There have been several YouTubers who've been very influential to me in, in getting this started and overcoming my own inertia. So yeah, big shout out to Action Lab. I'll put links to all of these in the notes here. Um, some of the experiments he does, his attitude towards science, is just so inspiring. Physics Girl, Electro Boom is great. Ada Fruit, Element 14, Fran Blanche, Jerry Ellsworth, EEV Blog, AVE or uh, Arduino versus Evil. Not sure which one I'm supposed to call it these days. Great Scott, Lewis Rossman, spent many hours watching him repair MacBook computers. Very good uh, analytical thinker, problem solver. Strange Parts, Mr. Carlson's Lab, the guy with the Swiss accent. The Plasma Channel, what a fantastic resource. If you haven't seen this already, check it out. He does lots of high voltage stuff too. Applied Science, Cody's Lab, James Bruton, Big Clive. And uh, in the math front, Vihart, Mathologer, 3 Blue, 1 Brown. Gone. Today's reading is the Colorado Springs Notes from 1899 to 1900. This is what I'm reading right now. It's full of all kinds of incredible things. Like, did you know, in 1899, Tesla had to sketch for a fully working cordless phone. This was four years before even vacuum tubes were invented. So it's a day-by-day -day accounting of his experimentations, his thoughts, his questions, as he worked in his Colorado Springs notebook. So check it out. Link's in the description. Thanks.